again. I'm Mary Lyle. I'm the Director of Education for the Western Heritage Museum and Lee County Cowboy Hall of Fame. And today we're going to visit a boot maker. And there's a lot more to making boots. When I'm talking about making boots, I mean custom boots. There are manufactured boots. That's made in a big factory. But there's a big difference between manufactured and handmade custom boots. Let's go visit our local boot maker. And I'm talking with Dean Jackson, and he is a... A bespoke boot maker. That's what they call us now. Bespoke? B-E-S-P-O-K-E. -E. And what does that mean? Custom. Dean, can you tell me how long you've been doing this? I've been making boots on my own since 1980. Four. And before that, you said on your own, so did you apprentice? Yeah, I was working under a man named Bud Pate for two years. Yeah. And how many boot makers are left? Probably 300. Is there an association you belong to to get together? It's not really an association, but a lot of us get together every October in Wichita Falls, have what they call a boot makers roundup. Okay. A lot of our machinery is old. Uh, I know my finisher is... Uh, Let me look at it just a minute. That's a finisher. Built in the 70s. Okay. Uh, my soul stitcher back there was built in the 40s. Uh, these last I'm using, they're from well, November of 47. So you learned your craft as an apprentice and what made you interested in boot making? Uh, I've seen being a cowboy wasn't gonna make very much money. The thing we do is we take an imprint of your foot and do measurements. There's about 15 measurements and we do it on each foot. There's the left, there's the right. And that's done with a pedograph. <clears throat> As you can see, it shows the, the full imprint of the foot. Any hot spots is where the darker, darker places will be. We'll take a an order form, or you tell us what toe, what heel, top, foot you want, how many rows of stitching, and then we start building the last. Start with just a slick last. It doesn't have any buildups or on it or anything. Then I go to these measurements and measure in different places. And this is where I start building up the last to fit the person's foot. And, you know, once you set it on this pedograph, then you can see that you're, whether you're covering up the whole, everything I need. See, I still need to do some work from here forward because as you're looking down, you can see, you can see that blue that's still showing and I've got to cover that blue up so you won't have a spot that's too tight that's biting you. All of the foot is here. That's the widest point of your foot. Okay. Then you have the waist, which is right behind the ball. That's kind of the little fatty part of your foot. Then you have the low end step or the cuneiform. You have a measurement that is one inch down from your short heel. The short heel runs from here to here. You measure all these measurements from the heel and then you also measure them from the cuneiform bone that's where you get your 15 measurements you know like i said when you set this last on here that's what you're looking to do is to cover up these areas you know and uh -huh. make it a true as true a replica of a foot as you can it looks like they have a high arch yes he's got he's got a pretty good arch and what you'll do is you'll make that boot. You can't go right there. That right. will wear you out. So you'll kind of, when you're fitting that insole, you'll kind of make this, this pattern. You'll make it, the insole fit here. And that way, uh -huh. it's supporting your foot. I haven't got it like this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just supporting it. A lot of people that wear shoes uh -huh. nowadays, if they've got a good arch, the older you get, that arch will fall. 
and that causes lots of leg aches, back aches, foot aches. As long as you're supporting the foot, it holds your arch up in place. Well, I know a lot of people who have custom cowboy boots wouldn't wear anything else because they're so comfortable. Yes, ma'am. And if you uh, get a good fit, there's there's nothing like it. Uh, yeah, you ask what toe they want, what heel they want, heel height, and uh, basically what foot and top. Here's some top leather. Here's some foot leather. You know, so they'll pick the top and the foot, any leather they want. And uh, then we just, like I said, the last, you fit the last first. You can do anything that a customer wants. I mean, to a point, good heel. You can make it a block heel or you can make it a tapered heel. You know, it's it's got some slope. A lot of people like these to ride in. Now, if you're just mainly gonna walk, this is just a block heel, more like a roper, and it, it gives you a lot of area to walk on. Like she said, you know, any, I've got a whole book of top patterns that I can sew, and if a person wants a specific color, you can uh, do anything, you know, anything they want. Now, I noticed the boot tops have different heights, too. Yes, yes, you can go basically from a 10 inch up to a 20 is the tallest I've ever made. You don't want them, when you sit down, you don't want the top to fold back like that. There's only so high you can go. There's only so low you can go. You get much less than a 10 inch top. Every time you sit down, your pants will come up over the top. But it kind of comes up in a wedge. In a wedge. Yes, ma'am. Here's a little gal that had a, a big calf. Yeah. So it comes down in here, but then it flares out to accommodate her calf. So that's another measurement you're going to be yes, taking. Once I get started measuring and we take an order, it can be anywhere from an hour to a two hour process. So how many hours is it going uh, to take you to make a pair of boots? You probably got 60 hours in a pair, start to finish. And are you training anybody to follow? I have not trained anybody. Whenever somebody comes up and I want to learn how to make boots, I tell them, well, have you got five years? You know, we're a society that wants everything right now. I could take you and together we could make a pair of boots in uh -huh. two weeks and you could walk out the door and you wouldn't know hardly any more than when you started. <laughs> right. I hope, I hope and pray there's somebody that wants to learn. Well, that would be wonderful to have an apprentice and to pass on this, this wonderful gift that you have. A lot of my customers want a good working boot. Mine are made to wear. They're not made to pull out once a year and worn for a couple of hours and stuck back in the closet. Tell me about the different leathers. Have you, there are more exotic uh, leathers. Yeah. Alligator, kangaroo, elephant, giraffe, rhinoceros, water buffalo, and of course, good calf skin, good bull hide, and uh, pig skins. Some people make boots out of snake and eel yeah. and lizard. I won't do that because they will not hold up. And the premium price I charge you, they need to last. And I just don't feel that those leathers will last. Notice these deep V's in the back. Yeah, those are called scallops. Scallops. And you can, you can have no scallop, which is a stovepipe top. You can have a narrow scallop. Uh, I think that one was a deep, you can have a medium deep, or you can have an extra deep. A stovepipe top is a hot, it's hotter on your legs, because there's no air can get to it. Other than that, most of it is just your preference. I believe saddle soap is one of the most important things because as the name says, it's soap and it kind of cleans dirt, the oils off of the leather. And then you let it dry and you can polish them or condition them with whatever and buff them up into a shine. You buy the leather, it's already colored, so you're yes, not gonna be colored, dying it. but you know, it's just flat. Right. Uh, we have to cut it out according, where well, we go off the last, mm -hmm. we make our top patterns. We know what size foot we want, we cut out the foot leather, then we crimp it. All and right. that's, that's where you start the shape of a boot. Okay, that's a crimp board. Crimp board, yes, ma'am. And see, 
it, like I said, it starts the shape of the boot. The crimping is the shape and the dorsal pulling out about 75% of the stretch out of the leather. So you're working, working the leather. Oh yeah, yeah, we're working. Getting all the wrinkles out. Like I said, starting that, that shape, the mm -hmm. shape of the boot. Boots do get handed down, don't they? They do, not as much anymore as they used to. So yeah, it's a dying art and we'd love to have somebody <laughs> learn <laughs> how to do this. Don't come unless you want to be serious though. Want a good fit, something that'll last. See, I'm a year and a half to two years out on orders, so job security. Well, I hope you enjoyed our visit with Dean Jackson and learned a lot about custom boot making.